All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Elmore Leonard's novel, 52 Pickup. You know, I got all the Elmore Leonard novels, and I will show them to you right now. They're over here on the other side of my library. We will go down here and look at them. They're right there. He is one of my favorite writers. And we'll be reviewing all of his books on the channel here over the years. Right now, it's 52 Pickup. We always talk about the covers. I actually love the Elmore Leonard covers. They're always got great graphic design. They're always very colorful. I, I have no problem with any of these covers, that the Elmore Leonard books. Um, this book was put out in 1974. It was his third mystery that he ever wrote. Um, there was a movie made of it in 1986. I did a little research on the movie. It stars people that you would recognize, but their names you would not recognize. Like, their faces you would recognize. At least I did. But I'm like, I have no idea who those people are. But I never did see the movie. It'd be kind of interesting. 1986? You know, whatever. <clears throat> this book is about Harry Mitchell. I love this book. I was pleasant. I read this book when it, you know, I read these, all these, all my Elmore Leonard novels I've read once, but a long time ago. So rereading this, I was really pleasantly surprised how much I really enjoyed this thing. This is about Harry Mitchell. And he's m been married for a long time, been very faithful, but he finally has his first affair with this girl. Now he's probably in his mid forties and he has this affair with a girl that's like 20 years old. He meets her in a club somewhere and uh, has this affair with her and he's carrying on this affair and what's funny is <clears throat> the way things are nowadays compared to back in 1974 when this was i mean this guy was calling his wife hey lady hey hey babe i'm staying home i'm staying at work late you know i won't be home for dinner blah 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 he's calling her from the his girlfriend's phone and i'm thinking to myself Man, back in the day, you could call people from whatever phone on the planet you wanted to, and they would never know where you were. <laughs> but then, you know, in the 90s, we got, call, you got Star 69, where you could call back. You push Star 69, and you call back, and it will tell you exactly what phone that was and where it was. And then we got cell phones where everybody knows where everybody is. At the, at the, you know what I'm saying? And so I was just, some of the stuff like this in these older novels sort of tickles me when I reread it. I'm like, God, this guy's taking a risk calling from that very phone. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's 74. Nobody, nobody, everybody got away with stuff back then. There were no cameras on everything. There were, there, your phones weren't GPS tracked to you, you know, you could, you could go wherever you wanted without nobody knowing where you, where you were. So anyway, he's got this affair going and then these guys, they kind of kidnap him. And they, and they say, and they've got this videotape of him in the Bahamas with his new girlfriend. Like, but it's just like little snippets of videotape of him getting in a car with her or maybe in a restaurant with her. And they're like, we're going to, I mean, there's no sex in the video. It's not like a, it's not like they, these con men like videotape the, him and the girl having sex or anything. No, it's just like casual stuff. And they're like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to release this tape. And, uh, and, and then your wife will know you're having an affair and all your business associates will know you're having an affair and it's going to be very embarrassing to you and 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 unless you give us $105,000. And I'm like, $105,000? Where's the five? A hundred and... Why not 150000 Why not 200000 Why not 100000 Why 105000 I was like, and it's never explained what the extra 5000 was. Like a hundred, we need, we're going we're gonna to release this semi-incriminating tape unless you give us 105,000. And so then Mitchell's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? This is going to be embarrassing. And I'm thinking to myself, who gives a, if they release the tape, right? It's like, there's nothing really that incriminating on it. Other than you're in the Bahamas and there's a, and you get in a similar car, a car with a certain girl, and then maybe you're seen on the beach with the same girl. I mean, it's like it's like you could. I mean, you could come up with a thousand excuses. And uh, I'm like, 
this is like the worst con job ever, right? And uh, Mitchell's like initially worried, and then he's starting to think about it too. You know, he starts to do a Durfee and think about it. He's like, because I spotted it right off. I was like, I'm good. Who gives a fuck if that's released? I would release that tomorrow. I wouldn't give a crap. And, uh, and uh, you know, he comes to the same conclusion. He's like, he's like, uh, I don't care if this, what do I really care if this? Uh, so he just, he's like, he tells everybody. He's like, ah, you know, he goes to his business associates. Well, you know, these dudes, uh, they, they found out that I'm dating this 20 year old and they taped, they got a videotape of me and the girl down in the Bahamas and they're going to release it and try to embarrass me. And they want 105,000 bucks. And uh, and then the so business associates are like, oh yeah, we don't care. And then uh, he tells his wife. No, his wife does care, because he does confess to his wife that, uh, hey, yeah, um, I'm having an affair with a 20 year old. And his wife is like, that's younger than your own daughter. Blah blah blah. And she's like, yeah, I know. I just thought I'd tell you. She's like, well, why did you tell me? I don't even want to know this crap. And he's like, well, I'm telling you because. They have this videotape of me down in the Bahamas with the girl, and they, they want to extort $105,000 out of me. And she's like, man, you're the dumbest fucker on the planet. Why did you even, you know, I mean, she's like, everything you do in your life is a screw up. I mean, everything is a travesty with you. So she's not happy, but she's like willing to kind of put up with it, right? And then, um, and so it's kind of like this, just like this. And then the, and then the con men are, are kind of like, Oh shit, the dude just told everybody like he don't give a you don't give a fuck, you know? He just told everybody we were, we can't con him anymore. And we need our 105,000. We got to have our 105 grand. Well, he just and so that's when this novel goes from sort of like comical to bloody awful gruesome real quick it's like one of those tarantino and you know that i've said with the elmore leonard novels these are tarantino got everything he knows about writing from elmore leonard he elmore leonard was tarantino's favorite writer quentin tarantino even filmed jackie brown which was based off of elmore leonard book and this is about when when the con men realize hey this dude just played us he just told everybody anyway that's when the story spirals into hell in a handbasket real quick and i just loved it because it got bloody fun and way bloody gruesome if you know what i'm saying it just went into tarantino blood splatter land and it was such an unexpected turn about a third of the way through this book and i was like whoa whoa they should make a movie of this again Starring people we know, not people from 1986 who were just sort of side B actors. Anyway, I loved, I loved 52 Pickup. It was dynamite, man. This was, this is, if you love Tarantino movies and you want to read one that ought to get made into it. Like, 52 Pickup, man. It's dope. This thing is dope. I give this thing a 9.5 out of 10. I loved it.